Hey everybody, welcome to Switch for Board Gamers 2. This is a semi-regular segment in which I look at a collection of Switch games that may be tempting to board game owners. So if you own a Switch or maybe thinking about one for the holiday, here are 10 titles that have uh, caught my eye and, in my opinion, seem to appeal to a board game audience. So let's take a look. First up, we have Hand of Fate 2. Hand of Fate... 2 is a combination of a sort of Batman or Shadow of Mordor style brawler with a sort of card based RPG. The first game was quite fun and the second one uh, has been great on PS4 and PC but it's now great to have on the go via Switch. If you like the first game or if you're interested in sort of a combination of RPG mechanics and action uh, combat this could be for you. Uh, for those that may be a little uh, drawn away by the combat, it is pretty interesting and uh, pretty programmatic in its own way, so if you haven't tried it, it definitely is worth a look. If you are a fan of Banner Saga, which is a narrative and turn-based RPG game, uh, you'll be happy to know that all three games are available now on Switch. So if you are interested in this uh, sort of turn-based combat, you definitely can check that out on Switch right now. Again, the full trilogy is there. Uh, these are pretty grand epics and the combat is very interesting and uh, great for any strategy gaming fan so this is a good one to check out that's the Banner Saga trilogy I reviewed Frost when it was first released on iOS and this is uh, one of few games on this list that is really a pure card based board game uh, this is a unique uh, solo game that was available initially digitally and has you making sacrifices to get through a journey in the cold. You have to move quickly as there is a frost that is always behind you pushing you forward. So you have to use your resources carefully, gain new resources, uh, gain new survivors, etc. as you try to move your way through this sort of deck builder that has you playing against the game itself and trying to end up victorious. Frost is available now and definitely worth checking out on the switch or on really any device it's quite a fun little solo game light fingers is a game i actually heard about from uh twitter via rami ismail this game is a very uh interesting multiplayer game where players take on different roles so some players will be the uh, heroes venturing through the dungeon while another player will control the traps and npcs that are in the dungeon uh, this really is meant to be played couch co-op, and I haven't had too much time to dive into that, but I've heard really good things, and the kind of solo I've tried seems like it has a lot of potential, so this is one that's pretty good to keep an eye on, so be sure to check out Light Fingers. Dead Cells is probably one of the less board gamey of the bunch, but it's just a great game that I wanted to call out here in the middle section. Uh, Dead Cells is a rogue-like metroidvania game uh, it really has really great controls and has that feeling of making you f uh, seem like you're just such a hero and so um, skilled at just navigating your way through the game I really feel like this uh, has a unique place in the way that it just makes you feel uh, strong and competitive just through the great controls that it has. It also has this cool system of new weapons, so you're constantly discovering new weapons and your loadout in each run is going to be different. You become familiar with the different types, but there's definitely a lot going on and cool ways that uh, you can get the different items to interact. Next up we have Sushi Strikers, which is a Nintendo published puzzle game. This game has you matching different plates of sushi and going on a grand adventure across a uh, island and facing off against various enemies that want to stop the world from tasting how good sushi is. I can really get behind this premise and the game itself is pretty fun. This is definitely one though that you're going to want to use the touch screen on the Switch to use. In this video I'm trying to use a controller and it just doesn't have the speed to really keep up. So this really is one, while you can play it on your TV, you're going to want those motion controls, uh, those touch controls in order to really uh, keep up with the enemies as you proceed through the game. So if that isn't the way you play Switch, you may want to reconsider Sushi Strikers. Into the Breach is an excellent strategy game from the makers of FTL. The game currently was, or initially was only on PC, but with this release we actually get to play it on a console and they've done the controls amazingly well. Um, you hardly notice and it really doesn't provide that much slowdown. 
Uh, so if you're looking to play Into the Breach and maybe you can't set it a PC, you want something portable, this is an excellent version and I've been glad to have it. So that is uh, Into the Breach, available now on Nintendo Switch. Octopath Traveler is an original JRPG for the Switch. Now I've seen this uh, talked about as a successor or a remake of Final Fantasy V or some sort of throwback. And while artistically it is a throwback to kind of 16-bit era JRPGs, uh, it actually shares a lot with Bravely Default, as well as just kind of shaking up the conventions of the genre. The whole story and the whole way you play the game is extremely formulaic, with everything split into clear chapters. I actually enjoy this. Each chapter is a bite-sized bit of gameplay, and if you are uh, someone that isn't looking for long sessions, you can really break it up based on this. I really find Octopath Traveler's combat and the way it's structured really interesting. So if you like JRPGs, or maybe want to look at a unique take on one, uh, be sure to check out Octopath Traveler. Picross. Picross is a good reason to own a Switch. Picross is a word puzzle game, and just recently they released Picross S2. The coolest part about uh, this is they introduced Clip Picross. So you have standard puzzles, but then you also have these uh, puzzles, which are make a large image once you complete smaller images. You unlock these smaller bits of images as you play through the main gameplay. So what's really cool is that it kind of gives you that sort of drip drip, almost free to play esque um, path to get through uh, the other elements that you're doing. So it really gives you motivation to complete those uh, parts of the game and allows gives you a little reward along the way. So that's Picross S2 on Switch right now. The Warlock of Firetop Mountain is a great uh, addition from Tin Man Games. This was recently just uh, put on to Switch, and it really fits well here. Uh, again, the controls, a lot like Into the Breach, are really well done. There's nothing too confusing here, and the interface is pretty simple to start with, but it really looks great on the Switch and, and plays well there. So if you've been looking for a chance to dive into Warlock of Firetop Mountain, this is much more than a standard game book. Uh, be sure to check out this version on the Nintendo Switch today. Digital games are not for everyone, I totally understand that, but I definitely think there's some great titles on the Nintendo Switch if you are a strategy gamer, and a lot of board game titles on the way, so uh, stay tuned here, we'll always share new Switch news as we get it, and thanks for watching.